Hi everyone, I'm Nick, alongside with Jake, Bailey, and Mitch, and we, for our research project, have, do students care about sustainability is the general question. So exactly what is sustainability? Investopedia does a really good job explaining it, and sustainability focuses on meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs, which is extending your business to make sure that it's gonna, the longevity of it will be there without destroying what you have going on in the present. So understanding sustainability helps you understand corporate social responsibility as well. So there's three pillars to corporate responsibility, and that is the economic function, the social function, and also with the um, environmental. And sustainability goes into that very much because of it affects how they operate within a business and the sustainability factor of that. So why is this important to students? Um, it shows trust and compassion within a company itself. So if a student buys from there, they'll be able to go back and they'll be able to trust that they're gonna get what they want. Um, also makes people, it's a, makes people feel good about themselves, about that they're helping out, that they're watching out for the environment, that they're helping themselves and others around them. Also inspires employees to, uni to unite communities to come together. <coughs> so why is it relevant to the consumer? Like I just mentioned before, it's gonna help you out in the long run. It's gonna help, the environment is gonna keep you around. For non-consumers, it's a big factor because of what it can do to the products that you purchase. If you're not careful, if you're not cautious on what you're buying, then it could potentially change what you were buying and the price of it. For businesses, it gives you a competitive edge. So comparing to a business that is not watching what they're doing, like for the corporate social responsibility, it will skew people away. And also for the future, that's what sustainability is about, it is about keeping the future and making it go on. So our hypothesis is when college students have more positive attitudes towards advertising sustainable products, the students are more willing to purchase a sustainable product. And with that in mind, our research goals are just, are couches more likely to buy from a sustainable company? Um, what products are they more worried about? Is there a certain kind? And then also, what businesses could, how could they improve themselves on the advertisement or is it just the products they're selling themselves? All right, so, he had said, yeah, kind of like the first slide, our research question is, do students care about like buying sustainable products? But uh, more specifically, we, like, we're looking if the students are more inclined to buy these products. Uh, and like, off of like, a few of the studies that we had found, uh, millennials like, were saying that they want like, to have more brands that are for like, sustainability, as well as uh, a few studies that had uh, like, shown that like, the Gen Z like, population 50 to 100% of them say that they want more of these products. And we were also looking at if students uh, like care if like the products that they're getting are like, coming from a company that uh, practice like social like, responsibility. And we had found uh, that a few of the studies had shown that 20% of the Gen Z like, population, uh, they like want more with like the business, like the ethics and sustainability. Um, and they, and we had also found that 90% of like the consumers will purchase a product that is uh, sustainable from such like a company that practices responsibility. So how do we want to execute this? So with our survey, what we were looking for is we want to get 95% of good data and then that 5% of bad data that we've been talking about all semester. And then who's going to be surveyed for us? What we're looking for is mainly students within the Midwest, you know, graduating high school seniors. We got current college students and recent college graduates. What we're going to be executing what you'll see in our survey later on. We're going to try for that 19 to 26 age range. And then for our survey plan, we're asking 17 total questions, 141 responses. Uh, we have students in the Midwest like we were just talking about, and we want all participants to be over the age of 18. So how can people access our survey? We're gonna send it out via direct hyperlink and have sent it out via direct hyperlink on Twitter, send it out on Instagram, Facebook, send it out emails, text messages, really however we can get this survey into people's hands, even putting it on university sponsored landing pages. So as for the sample plan, um, as Jake was saying, we did distri distribute it throughout campus to any student in the Midwest, graduating high school seniors or recently graduated college students through email as well as social media. Um, why did we do that? We wanted to focus on students in the Midwest because we feel like their buying behaviors are going to be different from kids out in LA, Florida, um, the East Coast, um, because of the demographic, psychographic, and behavioral characteristics that these students display. 
So students were, or participants were presented with one of two of these condition images. One being the made from 100% recyclable materials and one just a Nike shoe brand. Um, and they were asked questions based on that. So our survey had five questions on a, all of them were a bipolar like a scale varying between likelihood of purchase, um, whether they were happy or sad on seeing the image that was shown, um, whether they would recommend this brand to a friend. Um, and the demographics we were looking at were age, gender, education level, income levels, employment, marital status, and race as well as zip code to figure out where those students were coming from. So time for the fun stuff. So survey demographic results. We had those 141 responses. Out of that 141 responses, we had 25 non-responses slash ongoing responses. Who knows, they may go on forever. So out of those, out of those responses, 93.2% are either current or recent college students. So that means they're either in college, participating in it, maybe they're dual enrolled or just got their degree. So then 50% of those students are below the poverty line. It's an, employment, it's an important statistic to know while we're looking at the next results. And then 57% are employed currently. 81.9% speak only one language. 73% identify a single. And then 83.8% are at those ages between 19 and 26. So an analyst analysis of the result. Uh, so for our first t-test, what we did is we had our dependent variable is kind of an attitude towards the, the condition, those pictures that we just showed you. So either they were shown the, the image where they have the trusted shoe brand over 40 years or that sustainability image. So it came out to be about 51% were shown the trusted image and 49% were shown the sustainability image, even at about 50-50. So those that saw the sustainability image were happier and those who saw the control image were not as happy. That was outlined within our results by a higher mean uh, for those that were seeing that sustainability image and a lower mean and a higher standard deviation for those that were shown that trusted image. And then we did run a one-way ANOVA, which showed us a significant difference in images and purchase intention. It gave us a P result of 0 0.035, which showed our results were significant. And then a correlation, we ran it as our dependent variable was the, the purchase intention to make the shoe and an independent variable was that attitude towards purchasing that shoe. And we did see a strong positive correlation between happiness and purchase intention here within our correlation test. So why does this information matter to us? No, um, um, there we go. So to marketers, this is valuable information when creating a marketing plan. Um, it allows for a deeper understanding of consumer needs and it improves trust and engagement between staff, investors, consumers, and other stakeholders. It also improves consumer sales and loyalty. Sustainability is becoming more and more mainstream and normalized and it's a key factor in today's society that many businesses are striving to achieve and consumers are demanding. Sustainability is a pillar to creating a better future for all. Um, humans rely on resources for business, general activities outdoors, and survival, and ignoring sustainability can lead to exhausting those natural resources. Just look at the state we live in, in Michigan, we are surrounded by five Great Lakes. Um, we are living by the largest system of fresh water on Earth. The Great Lakes alone accounts for more than 90% of the fresh water in the U.S. One-tenth of the U.S. and one-quarter of Canada rely on our fresh water from our lakes. And the Environmental Law and Policy Center is constantly fighting to protect our lakes from invasive species, oil, and blocking industrial pollution. Sustainability is key to protecting our home, the Great Lakes. Um, environmental quality, let me go back for a second. Um, environmental quality, as I touched on before, leads to the quality of life and those that come after us. It's our responsibility to speak up and make individual changes to keep our land and air clean. And there's also financial gain. Um, EBIE Newsroom reported that improving a company's sustainability and overall corporate social responsibility leads to extended return on investment and increased profitability. So as a marketer, this is something that we should be concerned and interested in. So here's the catch. Um, a survey conducted by the Harvard Business Review found that 65% of surveyors said that they did want to pur purchase Purpose-driven brands that advocate for sustainability, however, only 26% of those people actually go through with that purchase. So, as a marketer, what can we do to get through that intention-action gap? 
Um, we can use social influence by creating informational campaigns and recruiting someone that people trust in the community that will lead people to joining in in the sustainability movement. Um, the Harvard Business Review found that telling online shoppers that other people were buying eco-friendly products led to a 65% increase in making more sustainable purchases. You can also collaborate. Collaborating with a nonprofit that promotes sustainability or responsible use of the outdoors would be beneficial, such as the National Park Foundation, Trout Unlimited, or Protect Our Winters. Um, this would not only bring in consumers who support those movements, but also would appeal to new consumers who see that you stand with nonprofits. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Hydroflask, but Hydroflask did a collaboration with the National Park Foundation and created a line specifically that created color schemes, and that's a cool way to incorporate, incorporate sustainability within your brand as well. Um, and in using emotional appeal and rational appeal would be another one. Hope and pride are incredibly useful in driving sustainable consumption. Consumers are likely to engage in a behavior when they derive positive feelings from doing so, and making it known to consumers exactly how much impact their action will have will cause more self-efficacy. What effect will this purchase really make on the environment? A strong message that communicates the local impact can be extremely powerful in reaching consumers. So as for our research question, we can accept it. Um, it does seem that students care, however, we as marketers need to find ways to bridge that intention action gap. So the likelihood of purchase was linked with happiness and sustainability makes people happy. Overall, our study builds on the amalgamation of other studies done on sustainability concerning consumer behavior, finding that happiness is linked to the likelihood of purchase and sustainability makes consumers happy. This is our future. Metaphorically, a snowball effect is the process that starts from an initial state of small significance and grows into an enormous far-reaching snowball, continuously moving as long as there's snow. Each one of us is a particle of snow and we have a chance to make significant change that reaches all around us. This is something that isn't gonna be going away anytime soon. Thank you for listening. Do you have any questions?